the periodic table as tested in KCSE chemistry paper 2 for the year 2020. Kindly welcome and stay on until the end. In the year 2020, question number 4 tested the understanding of the periodic table. So we were told table 1 shows the elements in period 3 of the periodic table. The candidates were supposed to study the table and use it to answer the questions that followed. So as usual, the elements in period 3 are sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon. So part A asked the candidate to write the formulae of two oxides of sodium and chlorine. So when it comes to sodium, the first oxide is sodium oxide with that formula. And then of course we have sodium peroxide as another oxide of sodium. Each half a mark to give a total of one mark for part A Roman 1. Now moving to chlorine, on the list of oxides of chlorine, we have ClO, we also have ClO2, there is ClO3, we also have Cl2O, there is Cl2O2, Cl2O3, Cl2O4, Cl2O5, and then there is also Cl2O6, and last but not least, there is Cl2O7. So all these are possible oxides of chlorine. A candidate was to pick any two for half mark each to give us the next one mark. Now moving on to part B. The candidates were informed that the products of the reaction between phosphorus and chlorine usually depend on the conditions that are used. So the candidates were asked to write the equation for the reaction when chlorine reacts with excess phosphorus. So here... Candidates were supposed to realize that when we use excess phosphorus, we form phosphorus 3 chloride, not phosphorus 5 chloride. So, we had actually three possible equations that the learner could write. The first one would involve phosphorus in solid state reacting with chlorine gas to give phosphorus 3 chloride. This, the state would either be a liquid or a gas that would be allowed for that. To balance 2 on our phosphorus chloride, 3 on chlorine, and 2 on phosphorus. Apart from these, the second equation that was allowed was P4, in solid state, reacting with chlorine gas to again give phosphorus 3 chloride. Again, we would allow liquid state or gas. To balance our second equation, a 6 on chlorine, a 4 on phosphorus 3 chloride. Finally, the candidates had an option of giving us P10. In solid state, reacting with chlorine 
to give again phosphorus three chloride. We would still accept liquid or gas as the state symbol. Balancing 15 on chlorine and 10 on phosphorus 3 chloride. Let's now proceed to part C of question number 4. So part C asked us to identify the element with the highest electrical conductivity. Now, going back to the list of elements in period 3, we have sodium, magnesium, aluminium. These three, as we said, are metals. Then we have silicon, which displays properties of both metals and non-metals, and we called it a metalloid in our discussions. And then proceeding to phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and then argon. These are non-metals and therefore are non-conductors. So going back to our three metals, we said they are good conductors of electric current because they have delocalized electrons. Silicon is a semiconductor. And then of the three metals that we have here, we explained that conductivity depends on the number of delocalized electrons. And as we know, sodium has one, magnesium has two, and aluminum has three. So the answer here would have been aluminum for the first mark. And then we explained that it has the highest number. It has the highest number of delocalized, which we can also call mobile electrons for the next mark. Moving on to part D, the examiner told us to describe an experiment that can be used to illustrate the variations in the reaction of sodium, magnesium, and aluminum with water. So in this question, the reactants were already given by the examiner. There is water, and then we have our three metals. What a candidate needed to have done is to simply show the differences in the rate of reactions of these three metals with water. So we would begin with sodium. And as we know, sodium reacts vigorously. Sodium reacts vigorously with water. And we know that uh, as it does so, we will produce a hissing sound. So this vigorous nature of the reaction between sodium and water was the marking point for one mark. Coming to magnesium, we know magnesium reacts slowly with water. This slow reaction of magnesium with water would be replaced with production of bubbles. Of course, the bubbles are normally very, very tiny. So reacting slowly would score for one mark. And finally, a candidate would tell us that aluminum, on the other hand, does not react with water. This could be replaced with no bubbles being formed. So, dear candidate, this question was more or less asking us to describe the rates at which our three metals react with water. And as we do so, we were to give the differences, we were to give the variations in the rates of these reactions. Lastly, part E of our question asked us to state and explain 
the differences in the melting point of one chlorine and argon and two magnesium oxide and silicon four oxide of course beginning with chlorine and argon now we know chlorine is a halogen and exists as diatomic molecules argon is an noble gas which exists as isolated atoms with no bonding at all monoatomic so this is monoatomic this is diatomic of course we expect the van der waals forces to be stronger in chlorine than in argon so that makes chlorine to have a higher melting point to have a higher melting point than argon for the first mark we'd go ahead to explain that chlorine is diatomic chlorine is diatomic while argon is mono atomic so what would happen next is that the van der Waals forces the van der Waals forces in chlorine are therefore stronger than those in argon that would give us the next mark for explaining why chlorine has a higher melting point than argon finally for the year 2020 kcse chemistry paper 2 we were asked to again state and explain the differences in the melting point of magnesium oxide and silicon oxide now getting back to our information about bonding magnesium oxide would have giant ionic structure while silicon four oxide would have giant atomic structure now both substances usually have very high melting point but all the same we know that magnesium oxide has a higher melting point than silicon four oxide now looking back at our notes we realize that there's no known explanation as to why substances with giant ionic structure have higher melting points than those with giant atomic structure so if a candidate just identified the trend we would give the candidate all the two marks without necessarily explaining why and with that we've come to the end of our short video where we have reviewed the periodic table particularly period three as tested in the year 2020 kcse chemistry paper two thank you so much for your time and continue keeping it the Kenyan teacher for more reviews.